my name is Jacob. I am a, an adopted grandson of Miss Jean kind of. My wife's her granddaughter. She kind of took me in as her own grandson and, and treated me like family. We know that Miss Jean's in heaven now. We know he's, she's dancing with Mr. Jim and they're probably eating some good food and hanging out and having just you know, such a great time, but it doesn't make it any easier for us. Uh, we have a hard time because we mourn for Miss Jean and we miss her. We're gonna miss a lot of stuff about her. A couple things I remember about her. I remember she was tough. Um, she wasn't. She wasn't a pushover. Um, she wasn't. She wasn't somebody that you were gonna, you know, fool like uh, Mr. Jim said. You weren't gonna pull the wool over her eyes. Um, she was a straight shooter. If you came to her with an issue or a problem, she wasn't gonna, you know, just tell you what you wanted to hear. She was gonna tell you the truth. Um, she always had my back. Um, it was funny. We would, you know, have joking arguments or something, and she would get on Jeannie and say, "Hey, you know, you better be nice to him." You know? and she, she would always take my back, and uh, it was nice to have her in my corner. Um, she was somebody that you wanted on her side. Um, I also remember she was a great cook. I don't have the best memory. Um, I can't have trouble remembering a lot of things in the past, but food sparks memories in my, you know, for me. Um, I remember she was famous for her her stuffing on holidays, her apple pie. Um, she made holidays events. Um, they weren't just, you know, another day. They were a big event, and I think she's passed that on with her family. I remember her uh, red sauce she made. I don't know. I remember getting together? We had red sauce, and it was it was delicious. I remember it very clearly. And I was talking to Jim about it, and he's like, you know, in that red sauce, she put like butter and you know pork shoulder. I'm like, well, no wonder it was so good. You know, she put all that stuff in there. That's probably horrible for us, but it tastes really good. You know, um, Nanny was really sharp. Um, you know, her last two and a half years, you know, she had the Alzheimer's and the dementia, and it really progressed. But before that, she was really sharp. She, you know, had a really good job at the sheriff's office and uh, worked with Mr. Jim and Harmony. Um, she, she was a wise person. You know, she would always help solve family problems. If there was an issue going on, she would help the family solve them. Nanny was really fun. That's something I remember about her. She always wanted to have a good time. She would always jump in and want to have fun with the family. Um, I remember at Kevin and Melissa's wedding, you know, Nanny and Pop Pop were just out there dancing the whole time, and they probably were like, they were over the life of the party. They had more fun than any of us. Or just her, her 50s birthday party, we had a 50s themed birthday party just a few months ago, and she was out there dancing with Aunt Carol and, and the family and just, just having a great time. Um, my daughter Leah just remembers Nanny you know, dancing with her. That's one of the things she remembers about Nanny is Nanny dancing. She, she loved to have fun and she loved to dance. Um, just last week, they were playing this game with the, the jelly beans, and it's a, you have a, either a good jelly bean or a nasty jelly bean, but it looks the same, and you don't know which one it is. And this is just like a week ago, and she was playing it with the kids and laughing and having fun, and she got a good jelly bean, and she cheered, and it was just, she, that, that's who Nanny was. She wanted to have fun, and if there was something going on with the family, she wanted to be there and wanted to be involved and have fun with the family. Nanny loved her life, and she especially loved living her life with her family. One thing Nanny always said is that she wasn't really wealthy financially, but she was wealthy in love. She was rich in love, and she would never trade the richness of the love in her family for any type of wealth. You know, with her three children, her eight, grand, her eight grandchildren, her 13 great-grandchildren, 52 years of marriage, she was extremely wealthy in love, and she, she knew that and was very thankful for it. Around eight years ago, Nanny and Papa moved to this area, and we got the opportunity to spend a lot more time with them and, and get to know them and get even closer with them. And, and what I probably remember most about Nanny is the way that she loved. Um, she, she loved very deeply, and she loved with her whole heart, and she loved her family. In John 13, 34, and 35, it says, I give you a new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you. You must also love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. We know that God is love, and love is from God. And Nanny definitely showed love to anybody that she she knew and you knew her. Nanny, Nanny loved with all her heart. Nanny didn't really like to talk about herself that much. You know, if you were talking to Mr. Jim, sometimes he would share a little bit more, you know, about what was going on. And Nanny, she'd be like, you know, I'm doing okay. You know, how are you doing? You know, she didn't she didn't go into a lot of detail. So if she was here and she was coaching me on what to say up here at her funeral, she would probably say, okay, okay, you know. Enough already about me. Uh, tell, tell them about where I am. Tell them about the colors. Tell them about the most beautiful colors. They couldn't imagine the colors. She'd say, right, Jim? Tell them about the colors. Tell them about the angels. The angels singing. I've never heard such beautiful song and beautiful music. You couldn't imagine it. 
Tell them about the love of God. How if they only knew how much God loved them, they would follow Him. Tell them, remember how I looked at my grandchildren and great-grandchildren and the glow on my face. How that's just a picture of the love that God has for us. Tell them I met Jesus. I, I touched the scars in His hands. I cried as I thought about how much Jesus loved me. Tell them that Jesus loves them. Tell them He died for them. Tell them He's real. Tell them not to wait. We are all failures in life. But you don't fix yourself and then you come to Jesus. You come to Jesus and then Jesus fixes you. Tell them He's coming soon. Tell them I love them. And tell them I will see them again one day.